All right. I guess the podcast is speeding. seemed like a non-committal turning down signal well i mean i already started with vocals so i think i'm <laughs> making it a little easy for you that's all i get that little bit yeah. of music that's more than you usually get really yes that felt like a very short period of time <laughs> although that is something i do recognize you should <laughs> yeah yeah hence the name of this show I already told you that. I sure as heck have. Yeah, I think you have. Yes. But, you know, as uh if you're if you're a longtime listener of this show, which we hope all of you are, <laughs> uh, you'll know that this is the time when the sweat starts forming. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, I gotta clear my froggy throat. Yes. <laughs> Cause this is a podcast about music. It sure is. And each time it's not week or month or sometimes now. <laughs> a it's been, period of time that passes. Whenever I make one of these, um, I play some music for Brian that he has definitely heard yeah. but does not recall with the intent of making it stick. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what we're going to talk about until he hears that music at the beginning of the podcast. And I could tell you, because you don't get to see this, I was looking at his face. And there's different faces he makes at the beginning. It's either like, but most of the time he tries to blank it, uh-huh. like make a blank face so Poker I can't face. read it. Yeah. But the face you made was familiarity. Oh. But absolutely no idea. Yes. What the person's name is or Good. the band's name is. Good. So I can see it across the room. I've got full control of my yes. facial confusion. And what we're going to do is listen to some music uh-huh. and talk about that artist or band. Good. And we remember with you all because we remembering is great and fun. That's right. And um, and try to make it stick. And I make a mix every single time uh-huh. that goes along with that artist. And it has more songs on it than we're going to play because we're just going to play little snippets. Um, but if you would like to hear more of their work, please listen to some of that and mm-hmm. then go buy a whole record. That's right. Whole That's record right. from a store. That's right. That you walk into physically. <laughs> If you there's put one money around on the counter, just real money, not even your card. Oh my gosh, you I can't know. even use the card. No, you can't. Wow, you can't. You look that person in the eye and you say hello. I'd uh-huh. like to purchase this album. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like, heard it on. I already told you. That. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Tell them that, and then yeah. that same look of confusion that was on and my non, face, yeah, non recognition, will then be on their face, and then you'll fully yes. understand what it's like yes. to be me. Unless you're in Slovenia, where we are <laughs> continuously in the top, you know, top of the music uh, podcast, what's, what's music do, commentary, uh, commentary section yes. of. Thank yes. you, Slovenia. Thank you, Slovenia. We, we Keep need it to going. learn thank you in I know. Slovenian. There is an episode where I we were in Slovenia and recorded and had someone tell, told, tell us how told to say to the us. name of our podcast. Yes. So um, I'll go dig back that up. Again, I can't remember which one that was for. Oh, no. Ziggy. Ziggy there she is. Say. Our She's cat is making, making We're going to ignore her. her We're going to move on. presence known. How are you, Brian? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Uh, it's kind of a gray, misty day today. And this now we're entering into the dead of winter in this new year we're, yes, we're of on 20 and 23. Day after New Year's Day. Oh, my gosh. Day? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's the... I don't know what the 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 second to last is penultimate. There's got to be a word for second to first. <laughs> yeah, probably the yes. second day. Yes. Yeah, I assume. So. Um, special day out there for one of ours. Happy yes. birthday to her. You know, so we want to make sure that everybody knows that it's our daughter's birthday today. That's right. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Um, big listener. I know she's a big... She's not going to hear this podcast, (laughs) but it's okay. Yeah. But no, I'm good. How are you, Melissa? More importantly. You know, I am good. I feel like the hugest procrastinator on the planet for how long it's taken me to make another podcast. It was weird because when we started this, now three years ago, Brian. That's insanity. Yeah. 
I think it's been three years. Although right? every time you listen to some podcaster and they're like, we've been doing this for five years. Oh my God. Yeah. I think they're the only ones who are well, that freaked out. Well, they're saying that because they're like successful. But I just mean like a passage of time. I'm not talking about like how right. it's, you know, um, been something that's, you know, monumentally changed our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has. Um, it has, but not in, um, you know, those kind of ways. But what it, what it has done. Yes. Beforehand, what I was going to say is when we started doing this, it was during the pandemic. That's and, right. Um, which is probably, I think, the catalyst for that, or we probably never would have done it. Um, for sure. It was boredom and being locked in our house. Well, and you're just utter fury and rage over the fact that I would, that a song would come on and, no a, and that I'm just being exaggerating yeah. for comic effect, Melissa. <laughs> um, I, uh, the look on my face and you'd look over at me and I'd say, well, who is this? And, and just the rage. Yeah. The uncontrolled rage yeah. just guided all of your energy into a, we're going to 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 now. We're gonna. It's getting really dark. <laughs> <laughs> Again, for dramatic yes, and comedic I know. effect. I know. Because um, rage is funny. That well, <laughs> it's funny because I'm talking about something you weren't actually doing. Yes. So it's juxtapositioning yes. a thing that you were not, and and this part of the podcast where I explain <laughs> humor <laughs> is also a key factor. But I think it was that as well. It wasn't just yeah. out of boredom. It, it was out of a, a mission, Melissa. Yes. You had a mission. And you took a hold of that and you you, you, you channeled all of your energy into creating this podcast. Yeah. But like at first, though, we were doing it every week. Yeah. And I didn't miss a week for no. a year, no. I think. You had no excuse. Insane. No, I had nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. And um, and now we have stuff to do and life and other things have opened up. Obviously, they've been dang open. But um, yeah, I even had COVID. <laughs> so like all that stuff happened, <laughs> you know, and as we all probably have at this point and I don't know. I just get slower. I get slower about it. And also, I think when you're not doing it every week, you really sec the second guesser. It oh, becomes super the inner second uber, guesser. The saboteur becomes much more um, present. Yes, because you have time to think about it. That's right. And you're like, mm, no one wants to hear you talk about. Oh, that. now stop it. But then I remember things like the artist pe people and the artists that I want to talk about, mm -hmm. and this person at some point that we're going to talk about Brian mm -hmm. has been on the list since the very beginning of okay. the podcast. So I, and I have had this playlist um, ready for a while, but yeah, I just, it was hard for me to figure out when I wanted to do it. So I'm finally getting and off my And today is the day. Yes. Finally going to get off my keister. But anyway, I am good. I am going <laughs> back to the States in a week. Yeah. For a bit. It's been about a year. Haven't been there. So yeah, it has been a year, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has. Right. Over. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that'll be weird mm -hmm. and good mm -hmm. and um, interesting and just have a lot of things going on in my brain, but all scattered all over the place <laughs> with no order whatsoever. <laughs> how about, what, what, how are you feeling? Good. Yeah. I'm fine. Uh, you know, as I was saying, new new year, new, it, it for me, it does, I don't know why, but it is literally a like i always feel like oh huh? there's new things to do it's a new opportunity like sort of a okay now we're starting again and uh I, as i was telling you the other day you know christmas always brings around new things in your life and you're like oh that's cool i have this new thing and i'm gonna play with this new thing and and it gets me thinking about arranging and changing things mm -hmm. so i'll have some some time to, to get into my monastic life, and I'll probably be doing some organizing. I'm already thinking of some organizing projects. But I would also like to try to do some creative things. So we'll see how that turns out. I don't know. Um, you know, and then, of course, there's work, which is boring. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm okay. Good. <laughs> also, I think, like, you know, we haven't been doing podcasts, but this, I really enjoy the holidays. For sure. And then afterwards, I can get a, get a little blue when it's over. Oh, yeah. But that hasn't happened yet. So that's, that's interesting. Good. <laughs> let's, let's hope it stays away this year. That's what I would like for the holiday season. Yes. I think it's because I didn't make any um, resolutions. <clears throat> and you're going to keep it that way? I think I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> I know what I'm going to say. I say the same things every year. Some of them it's happen true. a couple times, some it's of them true. don't. Why well, beat yourself up over it? That's right. I think that's why I'm not having the blues. Because I'm not writing anything down on paper. There you go. That I intend. Because <laughs> we all know good and well what I'm going to do with those. Oh, now stop <laughs> it. Anyway. 
So, Brian. Yes. Top of the podcast. I played yes. your little music. Feels like a hundred years ago. What do you, what do you, what are your, what's your I definitely from? recognize that. Is it a band? That. Is it a solo artist? Is I 1000% recognize that song. It's obviously been a while since I've heard it. And that the melody of the song you were just playing is bouncing. Whoa, that was a weird like inhale thing. Me? Are you, no, me. Are you breathing? Sorry, you guys. Okay? I did a weird inhale thing. Are you done? Um, I, my throat, mm-hmm. I think, stopped being a throat for a second. But now it's back. Um, well, I, I, this is a classic, an oldie but a goodie, Brian. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say? Let's have it. Where do you think we've heard this song? Because you're talking about Where? Mixes, like, like physically where? Yeah, like the, this song in particular. I've said this a couple of times on this podcast. Okay. There was a, I made all of the music for our wedding. So like oh. everything we danced to. Everything that was right. played while I was walking down the aisle, all the stuff, like every second of it, yeah. I had planned. Yes. Um, and we also made discs to give to friends. That's right. Um, and I'm a parting sure gift. This no, this is on there for sure. Yeah, because mm-hmm. now, now that you're mentioning that, I'm sure this is where I've heard that. So, question is, who is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that, just that's just not going to happen. Okay. I, I don't think it's, even if we sat here for 100 years. I mean, you'll admit it yourself. Yesterday, we were walking down yeah. the street trying to think of somebody, and, and we were just flummoxed. Yeah. So well, it was only because you said the you same. Just... It's the same person's first name, and it threw me off. But a different person, and then I just really couldn't think. But anyway, um, it was crippling. Yeah. So you just got a little taste of what it's like to be in my head. Um, I can help you. Yeah. So it's not going to happen. There's it's just okay. no way. So this person's name very much deserves to be known. By yes. You. And we're talking about Lisa Germano today. Lisa Germano. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, good, no, good, it rings good, a bell good, for good, sure. Good. It should, because like as like we said before, the premise of this podcast is you've heard it, <laughs> so we're just gonna get into it. That is more. true. There are a lot of Lisas. I feel like there's a, a lot of Lisa G's, right? That we've talked about. Well, there's Lisa Gerard. Yeah. There's Lisa Lisa and Cold Jam. Yeah, but that's not a G. That's a J. That's um, true. Uh, I'm trying to think of other Lisas. There's I Lisa. th- just feel like there's other L's out there. There Lori, are a of, there's a lot Lori, of Lori Anderson. There's, Lori's. Yeah, there are Lori's, but this is Lisa. <laughs> and Lisa's. <laughs> We're going to talk about Lisa Germano. And I guess I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Let's have yeah, it, no, please. No, have, not everything. I just so want to say. you asked the question, do you think this is a band? Or do you think, because that was sort of a leading question. I was trying to help. So them. is this not a band? She's a one-woman band. Okay. She's a multi-instrumentalist. She writes all the music. She's playing most of the instruments you're going to hear. Okay. So she's a, you know, a big deal. Okay. She's doing it all. One-person show. Yeah. In a way. Although occasionally they're, they're on the records, there's other people playing. But most of the time when she's writing, it's all happening. Okay. There. Fantastic. I just did a thing with my finger to, pointing to my head. <laughs> That's really good for podcasting. It's there. See, it's been a while. Um, but she is not from the place we usually talk about she's from the u.s weird yes she's from indiana okay so we're going to talk about her and some of this information is from wikipedia some of this is from my brain and some of it may not be verifiable <laughs> and, when I, and when i say something like that i'll make sure to say that's just stuff i thought that's just I'm wrong, false no i'm just kidding <laughs> but in general you know there's some things you hear and you're like i'll so i'll let you know if i think it's hearsay oh okay that's all i mean okay you know that's when fair. you're young because Back before, as we've talked about, back before the internet, which was always so fun about doing this, is that I get to revisit an artist that I could read a few things about, but didn't know as much about. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, there's not as much about her on the internet as I would like there to be. Mm. <laughs> so mm. um, I do also remember things that we just talked about when we were young because we liked somebody's music. You yeah. Know, and do be like, oh, is that true? Like, so that's what I mean by the hearsay. I see. I gotcha. Um, so anyway... As I said, she's from Indiana, and she was born, Her, I think both of her parents were musicians, but she, uh, she plays many instruments, but her primary instrument is violin. Okay. I would say second probably is piano, um, but she's known for being a string player. When she was, as, according to Wikipedia, I learned something, hmm. um, when she was seven, she composed a 15-minute opera for piano. Wow. Um, and her early musical career was um, with John Mellencamp. Huh. She played with him for seven years, so touring and playing on albums, playing, like starting in like the eighties, eighty-seven. Violin, <laughs> violin, oh, okay. and singing. I think. Wow. Um. So you know, obviously, wouldn't think of Mellencamp as having a violin player. Yeah. 
tons of I guess. Wow, And she also played with the Indigo Girls and, and David Bowie and tons of people, like a lot, a lot. Cool. A lot. So, so she was yeah. a, a, a sought after musician. Mm-hmm. And she also had a solo career. And that happened in 1991. She put out her first album on her own record label, which was um, the record label is called Major Bill Records. And the record was called On the Way Down from the Moon Palace. And I have heard it, but I'm not. Hold on a second. It. Yes. On the Way Down from Moon Palace. From the Moon Palace. From the Moon Palace. Oh, the the, the, the helped you. Was the well, the. there's a difference between Moon Palace and, <laughs> and the, the Moon, moon Palace. Palace. I'm yes. sorry. I think I, I said mean, the Moon Palace. I mean, because there could be palace. like five Moon Palaces. This is the Moon Palace. I'm pretty sure I said the Moon Palace. Okay. You said it so quickly. I wanted to make sure <laughs> I heard it. Well, she put it out herself, and then she got some um, attention from Capitol Records. Big okay. label. Big yeah. label. Sure. And she put out her first full-length um, record for a major label, 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 a label called label. Happiness in 1993. But what's interesting, Brian, hmm. is, I mean, it's interesting, and this is where you get into the hearsay weirdness, is, um, so she's on Capitol, huge record label, mm-hmm. um, sure of some pressure, and uh, people that were kind of like her benefactors at the label okay. left okay, or got let go. I see. So what happens, do you think, to someone who's an artist who's maybe not totally mainstream, that's on a really big label, when the people that like you leave? They give you lots more money, and they're like, yes, More attention. Gonna... They're yeah. like, you're my number one priority. That's right. <laughs> no. And so it didn't really, wasn't going well for her. Uh-huh. And then somebody who's omnipresent. Oh. <laughs> it's Omni just... Ivo Watts uh, Russell. He steps in the He picture. was a fan. He heard her. Uh-huh. And... Um, he started, he, along with John Fryer, who was his partner in this mortal mm-hmm. coil and a producer, um, started remixing some of the songs from Happiness for this EP that they put out in 4D Records, okay. which was called Inconsiderate Bitch. Whoa. The name of the EP was called that. Um, and I'm going to play you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play you one of those songs. It's called Puppet. And this was a single off this record. So yeah. this is from 4AD. This is um, her first release with 4AD, which came out in 1994. It was, okay. It was an EP um, of a remix of a song that EP was EP of a remix that was on Capitol when there you there go. she you got, got it? dumped because they didn't care. And it also became a single later on. So the song is called Puppet. second but i also wanted there to was say some, like atonalness going on there she does it. that which i really really enjoy there's there's definitely some some interesting things going on with tone um and i failed to mention that when she left capital the good thing that happened is that she retained the rights to her album so oh, she nice. was able to then re-release it through 4ed which is what's going to happen she got so the it's tapes released in 1993 Okay. On Capitol. <laughs> and then in 1994, mm-hmm. same record, re-released, a little, with a little tweaking. Yeah. Um, re-released, again, with different artwork, whole shebang. A little 4AD Let's treatment. listen, though, a little further into Puppet, because I really appreciate this next part. Yeah. I know we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about the lyrics to that song <laughs> because the thing that's interesting about the song is the lyrics to me yeah. and the song itself. Did you hear any of anything of what she's talking? Yeah, she about? was saying, "Yeah, uh, I'm your puppet. Your hand. I don't know if she I said were a puppet. 
your hand is in me or I'm in your control. Yeah. Or she was talking about being a puppet. I'm in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. But she's saying like, I have no eyes, no vision, the perfect girl. Like, and also like no voice. Like, Ooh, like yeah. basically you're controlling me. And if I was a puppet, we'd get along just fine. Is oh, what dang. she's saying. So it's a very you know, subversive kind of way of, and it's very, I just love the visual. Wait, but she wants to do that. Yeah. No, (laughs) you're so funny. You're really funny today, Brian. Um, But you know, you don't really hear the, the John Fryer Ivoness of it. They're being pretty subtle. What do you mean? Can you hear? Well, there was some goofy stuff going on in the background. Goofy stuff. Like, I heard some like, (laughs) you know, goofy stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just like there was like weird sounds going on in the background mm. and it's interesting because i was thinking about this i was listening to or listening to i was reading an article uh with tegan and sarah yeah they got a new record coming out and they were talking about making sounds and things like that and how back in the day they would use multi-track you know like tape machine things that's all they had they actually mm-hmm. learned it in high school which i thought was interesting um but now, you know, they have fancy things and they end up just using like their phones and stuff, but they do a lot of manipulation of sound. Hmm. And Melissa, <gasps> I'm reading a book that you, you gave are. me uh, at, well, our daughter, but through your recommendation. My anyway, teenage. and the, this particular author is just talking about sound and what it means to you and things like that. And the difference between um, like representational art and abstract art and how for a very long time there was representational art because that's what painters did. They painted things to make it look like the scene. And then when photography came along, they were like, well, we don't need to do that anymore. We'll just do abstract art. Or at least there's, that's a progression that happened. So she was making the same comparison to recording music with tape and all that stuff is that engineers sought to make it perfect because they were, they wanted high fidelity with all this tape and, and, you know, recording decks. Now with the computer, you can have the highest fidelity possible so it allows you to make it abstract and do weird who things likes with it. That? Yeah. Well, that's her whole point. <laughs> yeah. It's like you you gravitate to one thing or another, right? Yeah. And so when I hear things that are people are doing abstract things with in 1993, mm-hmm. they didn't have digital rec- well, there was digital recording but not exactly. not the way it is now. So people really had to make an effort to do that kind of stuff. And I think that's the kind of goofy stuff I'm talking about that they would do over there for you. Also, I would say, too, that she has a lot of natural kind of like what you were talking about. She would be on the spectrum of the more not perfect sound. Like um, on purpose. Like doing something abstract. Yeah. 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 But so song, I could hear that there was stuff going on back there. You could there hear the stuff. Yeah, there was like, like, like yeah. you know, probably guitar or But I think that's more an instrumental violin. choices that are happening. On this next song, you're actually going to hear them. There's going to be goofy stuff? There's going to be some real goofy oh stuff. My not, not goofy stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Let's call it good stuff. This song is called Dresses, and it's from the Inconsiderate Bitch EP that was, like I said, remixed by John Fryer and Ivo Wetzel. You make me think about nothing It feels so good like that You look at me so fragile So full of desire Wide, wide open spaces You make me want to wear dresses Wide, wide open spaces So I don't know if they, if they, the, she got the 4AD treatment, but you can certainly hear, you know, there's some like yeah. talking drums and some other. Yeah, and I don't know how much of that stuff was already there. Yeah. But I, I hear, I like to believe I hear it. <laughs> For sure. No, I mean, so, I mean, she's probably playing the, the violin in that yes. one. We heard that. Yes. And then she's got some percussion and stuff. If you stuff, hear a violin, is, she's definitely playing. It. You know what else I heard? What? Hand claps. <laughs> <laughs> pretty subtle ones like always that. good though always, always good that's good. great i okay. think that is very nice to hear she's got a lovely voice thank you so it's amazing that she was just a instrumentalist and then i guess this gave her i mean maybe she was I think, singing i with, think she was singing with, with, the, with the cougs yeah jinx which name is he supposed to use now melon camps is it yeah i, I don't know what he wrong. is um no 
definitely singing. And a weird thing is when I did this, I made this little arrow on the piece of paper because yeah. I changed the order. But I think we should hear the first album now a little oh, bit so you can get okay. kind of an idea. And Because this, this was all coming so from this, this was, EP. Yeah, so this album was released on 93 on okay. Capitol Records, and then it was re-released in 94. Yes. I'm playing the 4AD 94 version. Got it. But it's produced by the same person. His name is Malcolm Burn. Okay. Burn. Not burn. 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 Like Mr. No, he's Burns. <laughs> yeah, just Burn. Different guy. Um, And I want you to hear kind of the mood of it. Okay. So this is Happiness. This song is called Bad Attitude. It's the first song on the record. Bad Attitude. Yeah. We're going to no, get more into it. That's like, that you hear the okay. little. Yeah. But that's also a lot of the time on her records, there'll be little instrumental things that start things. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are hers. Some of them are like from other things, which we'll get into in a moment. Okay. But uh, I just wanted you to hear that because it starts off very different with that kind of sweet little music, not little, excuse me, little vignette happening, mm -hmm. but it's going to get into some darkness oh. very soon okay. after that. Do you want to hear it? Yes. So this song, once again, is called Bad Attitude. You wish it was sunny, but it's not. Ha, ha, ha. The sun will come out the day after tomorrow. Ha, ha. And you can move on to another bad day. You were pretty, but you're not. Ha, ha, ha. Well, goodness. She's a little subject <laughs> <laughs> in a great way. Like, that's the thing I would say too is um, she uh, can she can be dark. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like yeah, it. Yeah. She's working through some some demons. It's a bad attitude. It's the name of yes. the song. <laughs> <laughs> Fits well. I just love the. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you got to get it out like that. You know, if you got a bad cathartic. attitude, it's cathartic, right? Yeah. Put it out in the world. Let's Maybe it'll make it better. I, I have a third part to this. Okay. Sorry. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes it happens. <sighs> to be I, part know. of it. Especially these songs, because this song, I think, is like six minutes long. Jeez. So you're really not going to get a sense of what's happening. No. Which is why you should listen to whole records. Of course. Yes. Or so, the mix. Yeah. Let's listen to a little bit more. Oh, that must be why you're so happy together. another bad day and that's all you could change but you don't but your attitude baby doesn't have to be so sad you wish you were happy but you're not yeah I like wow. it wow <laughs> but a little sad <laughs> Just a little bit. It's okay to be a little sad. Of course. Yeah. I think. And I'm pretty sure this next song I'm going to play for you was also a single on this record. I think okay. I saw a video for it as well. I'm and the record that. again is... Happiness. This is Happiness. So mm -hmm. we've moved on from the one about the moon. Well, um, that was her first, first record. And I have to say, I love her, but I don't really... I'm not as into that record. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not playing that one. And also, it's a little harder to find on the... Uh, the old um, streamings yes, because Got it's it. um she really stood on her own label i see um but i have heard it several times happiness so wait a minute the record's called happiness but this song is called bad attitude I know. that's a little bit of a yeah well a lot of her st <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> it feels always felt for me very and i've said this before probably but it feels very intimate and self um uh reflexive yeah, yeah yeah not like and also like self-confessional kind of oh, like okay. but but playing but playing it up you know like there's elements of truth but then there's play drama in it. Yeah, yeah which i like sure um this song is called destroy the flower okay beautiful things they made her smile and thin put your whistle in your pocket and it stayed there 
He was a clever boy, full of new ideas. I told you you could do that. So he didn't. We'll get more into it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> also a little dark sounding. Yeah. Well, also <laughs> destroy the flower. I mean, um, this is one of the things I'm going to say is hearsay in my part from listening to the lyric. But yeah. I mean, it seems pretty obvious to me that it's about deflowering somebody. It does um, kind of hint yeah, to and that, destroying it? the flower. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah. like not really taking, like as they say, not following the campsite rule. You know, <laughs> leaving it better than you found it. Um, just destroying it. You know, and that's kind of how I took it. And yeah. As a youngster, I related to these sorts of things. Not okay. because, like, not that particular thing, but just in general, not feeling like things were perfect. Sure. There was a lot of imperfectness to her vulnerability mm. and um, talking about stuff that is not easy to talk about a lot. Yeah, of right. Um, but this song gets really, I, I think, enjoyable in different parts. And I wanted you to hear some of those parts. And okay. get, it gets more, um, you know, it, it's going to build and you know if there's something i like is a building song for sure when something gets louder and louder and does things so let's do it he was clever enough to stay drugged and fucked up Oh, we're going to go up again on that. Yeah. Although I wanted to say, I have this little Would sticky that note that tells time? me this. She said um, that she likes to write, a lot of the time, the music that she makes is about people who are stuck, but they want to go someplace else. Hmm. And I definitely feel that. <laughs> you have some he was relation. clever enough to stay drunk and fucked up, you know, like, but we're like, he's just kind of in this state. He's mm. not, he's not progressing. Not progressing. Yeah. yeah. Just sort of doing the same thing. Oh my old gosh. Thing. I accidentally let it keep going. I'm using a different um, device to play music today. And so you're learning on the job. I'm learning on the job, and sometimes I am not doing my job well. But I'm going to be fine. Are you back where you need to yeah, be? Let's do it. I just wanted to hear a little more of that distortion. I enjoyed. Yeah, it's nice. So then, Brian, the first intentional album for 4AD comes out. Hmm. And this record is one of her most critically acclaimed records. This is okay. where the critics were like, okay, I am into this. Hmm. You know, like this was um, mostly recorded at her house. Um, so she's playing everything until she got, I think, into the studio with um, some producers that she's working with, which she's working with Malcolm Byrne again. And then I think another, who's the other person that's playing on other things? Maybe it's not on this one. Maybe it's on the next one. Um, no, it is. It's Malcolm Byrne is going to be playing drums and guitar and dulcimer sometimes. And okay. Kenny Arnoff is going to be playing drums. Oh, Do you know I know that? Kenny Arnoff. Mm-hmm. He was Mellencamp's drummer. There you go. See, it makes sense. Yes. You made the Mellencamp connection. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm sure that there's some, you know, of that going on. Uh, I want you to hear the beginning of this song, especially, Brian, because we're going to get into something that we, we've heard before. But um, this was put out six months after Happiness. Hmm. So... I'm sure she already had happiness, you know, it was already being re-released. So it right. was like another year that she had, had to do to this. So she recorded music. at home and this album, it's, it's dark. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what's great about it is um, she was smart to do little things to kind of, she said like, so it's going to start with the Sicilian folk tune. Hmm. Um, that's, um, and she said she did that to add levity. <laughs> she was going to get into some dark shit basically. Mm. Um, and I think that's really smart. So I'm going to play a little bit of it so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Of that Sicilian song as we live in Italy. And I think you would enjoy it. This song is called My Secret Reason and it's off the album Geek the Girl. And it came out in 1994.
Whoa. Yeah, I know. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but then she's going to, you know, she's going to get into more of it. You want to hear where that song's going to go? Sure. I think that you might need to. I don't know much about science. My interests don't take me there. Hmm. <laughs> some dark, some dark chords. Yes. Winter time used yeah. to be snow. Now it's muddy and gross. Also, I just love that she says, um, I don't know much about science. My interests don't take me there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Not so everybody's good. does. But one last part of this song I want to hear. Okay. Um, a little bit more of my secret reason, which is the opening track of Geek the Girl. about Jesus but I feel the need for prayer and my secret reason so that's the way the record starts <laughs> <laughs> it's great but it is it is down tempo i mean sure. she's got a really nice voice yes. you know and 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 the songs are atmospheric and the i mean it's cool it's mm -hmm. it's good i mean it's just you got to be in for some darkness i guess yeah. well the thing that's nice about this album and i think albums that are really great is that they it feels like it's a piece on its own like mm -hmm. it's meant to be all put together it yeah. has different you know, sections that are going to sound a little different, but they all have a place on this album yeah. as a whole work. So, and this will be the next song that has a heart that is also the title track of this album. Okay. It's called Geek the Girl. All right. comparisons oh, no please no you do it compare but away. it's a little elliot smithy to uh -huh, me yeah. you know kind of breathy he, he was known to get into dark corners as yes, well yes and have sort of this spacey kind of mm -hmm. atmospheric music yeah sounding a little bit like that to me no I, I i don't i would i think that is totally fair yes it's totally fair but it's good it is and this song Wait, this is a three sectioner because okay. um, I just like where it goes. It's gonna get some nice. Yeah, that cool sound. I don't know what that is in the background. Is that the the arpeggio setting on the I mean, Casio the, keyboard? The, the... The... Mm. You know that sound. I don't think on it's the a keyboard? Casio, but maybe, it's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe the banjo setting. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Here's a little bit more of Geek the Girl. Now it's getting. It's interesting because we've been watching Twin Peaks with our son, and I feel yeah. like it's very much in that realm for oh, me too. Oh yeah, it's very moody. spooky. But I love like she doesn't do a lot of this kind of hard sounding stuff, and I know mm -hmm. it's slow, but it definitely kind of had this real darkness to it, which this particular next section, which is why it's a three parter, <laughs> has because I just love it so much. So let's listen to a bit more of the moodiness okay. of Geek the Girl.
I just love the deadpanness of it too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very effective in my opinion because she just sounds like she's like just bored. Yeah. Irritated. And, yes. But like, you know, I, I just love it very much. Anyway, that is the title track. You guys I like it. Say. I hear you. I see you're, you're shifting. No, I, you, you compared it to Twin Peaks and I mm-hmm. think it's, um, Maybe it's that shimmery guitar kind of situation that's going on in there because there's some of that as well yeah. on Twin Peaks. But yeah, it's good. I like it. And I'm um, speaking of weird and difficult subjects that are on this record, which we're going to get into <laughs> more. This song is called Sexy Little Princess. This one's really beautiful. This is, um, you can just see, this, remember too, she's playing all of this. So yeah. it's just so beautiful, except the dulcimer you're going to start hearing, which is the producer. I think Malcolm is playing. Yeah, I heard it a little bit yeah. there at the beginning. It's going to, we're going to play a little more on that song because it, I really <laughs> think that the, um, this one is combining this, that kind of moodiness that we were already hearing a bit, but with just these beautiful layers of strings and hmm. um, atmosphere. I just think it's a gorge hmm. song. Um, can be a little sad lyrically but it's very very wonderful that's okay yes let's hear a little bit more of sexy little princess little girl princess excuse me Simmer coming the in there. Simmer. The Simmer. Um, <laughs> but by far, Brian, and I, I, was, I wasn't even going to do the song, but it, I can't, I'd be remiss to not include this song. You do not want to be remiss. And I think from what I read, from what she talked about, she would understand why I'd have problems with it. And I, I love it. And I liked it a lot when I was young and I could listen to it. Mm-hmm. This song is called A Psychopath. And the reason it's hard is um, she wrote it about the fact that she had been stalked by a a man in her life and um she uses a real 911 call from an intruder that this woman but with the woman's permission um um and it's hard (laughs) because i'm only going to play a little bit of it because i can only handle so much of it but the end of it the the crescendo of the song at the end is him inside her house you know and and the phone going dead and it's hard you know and she's screaming and it's terrifying it's just terrifying and it got a lot of press when this came out because it's real you know and and the song itself is just creepy but beautifully done and she said she had a really hard time um uh deciding to record the song and like she kind of went back and forth and she had a hard time sleeping after she did it wow but she just felt like it was a statement she needed to make Hmm. and i'm glad she did because it is something you know that happens yeah. <laughs> yes very you much. know women can like and feel very vulnerable and unprotected so i'm glad it happened but it is one of those things like i can only i'm not going to play the end of it because <laughs> it's hard for me to hear that part okay um but i'll play a little bit of it so you can get an idea of what i'm talking about but when you hear the song title called a psychopath i think you probably know what you're getting into you know <laughs> it might there's give you gonna a clue. be some scary things in it sure. um but like I said, she doesn't just do it for no reason. Yeah. Um, there is a point to it. So here we go. A psychopath. A baseball bat, a baseball bat beside my
Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, though. The song itself, it's like one of the most beautiful songs on the record, but it is gut-wrenching. And like, yeah. like I said, I, I'll, later on I'll play it for you, and I definitely think people should listen to it. It is a gorgeous song, and it builds up to this crazy, perfect, with the recording thing, and and screaming, and like with her, too, vocally, being very, like the most guttural I've ever heard her singing with that going on. So it's just like a, oof. I yeah. was listening to it with headphones this morning. I was like, I can't, <laughs> I just can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. But, um, wow. It's a pretty brave thing to do. <laughs> For sure. That's extremely frightening, but yeah. you know, yeah. Something that is, you know, uh, an unfortunate part of our society, you know, and if people yeah. don't understand the real kind of impact of it, yeah, then and that's one way of doing it for sure. Yeah. Also, what's crazy about the, that recording is at one point, I think the woman even says like, I'm on the phone with the police and the person's just like, yeah, <laughs> and that's right before the phone gets dead. And it's mm. just, yeah, but hopefully they, hopefully they were okay because they did give their consent. So, um, but anyway, it's just very, very sad and hard, but I definitely, the thing that I enjoyed about Lisa Tremonta's work is that she's taking on things that are not easy to talk about. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. Yeah. She was never, I think in the time period, we were kind of talking about this a little before we got into podcasting and today. And in this time period, 1984 was like a big thing of like alternative, like getting alternative artists and bands getting signed to like major labels yeah. and, and promotion of different things. And I just can't imagine what you would do with her in that way because it'd be so different than other people which was so nice because this record actually was like i think spin put it in their like top um 100 albums of the 90s hmm. um was this album so i mean she got a lot of good recognition for it and attention um and definitely i you know heard it on college radio at that point i mean i i was i bought this record when it came out i'm pretty sure um it was just but it was yes yeah, definitely a it's going to it's going to hurt a little. Yeah. <laughs> it's not no, easy. That's, that's hard. It's not something you just have on the background. You're like, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. It's an art piece. You know, you're taking right. it in. It's, I, I, and it must have been weird to kind of fit in and not fit in <laughs> with all the different things that were happening at the time. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, like we watched that thing about Bowie the other day and he was just like, you know, I don't know. For him, it was just about doing the music, mm-hmm, you know, expressing mm-hmm. yourself in that way. And so clearly she was doing that you yeah. know she had things to say she had things that were that were um moving her and she used her talent and her ability Uniqueness to her. put that out there that's right exactly yes. and i think she is so this song brian is called yes. cancer of everything oh let's listen to it good Weird, that weird little like baby voice thing. It's hard. What do you think about that? I, again, I, I know you don't like the comparisons, no, okay. but it no. kind of reminds me of Ween a little bit. Yeah, like when you spinal meningitis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the same kind of like it's weird, yeah. Yeah, like little kid voice talking well, about so that's not like, getting better. Well, it's from... like cancer of everything. Just like, like I'm not improving. I'm not mm. doing better. I'm not feeling well. Yeah. Like I just don't seem like it seems like things aren't working. Yeah. Bummer. Let's listen to a little bit more of it. Okay. Can't serve everything. <laughs> this is a happy song. Cause I want cancer of everything. Yeah, right. And if I fall. got a nice beat (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's good no it's good yeah it's so i think you've you've gone in the darkness a little you want some light there is a light oh yeah sure this song is called stars brian all right why do people like stars 
Cool tremolo going on there. Yeah, it's nice. Felt a little different. Yeah, right? a little bit. Yeah, towards the end of the record, it's like okay. You've but done stars it. are like dying light, you know, well, you that are say? being snuffed out <laughs> over time, and that you know well, we'll all just die well, one day. Well, it's true. Like stars, but also I, I think the beginning of it too is like, why do people like stars? <laughs> They're so far away. <laughs> That's good. It's so great. They really are. I mean, they you are. Know, honestly, they're they they're are. very far away. They are. I mean, there's one sort of close to us. And we need it every day of our lives, <laughs> yeah. but thank goodness for that. It ain't going to be there forever. No, it'll blow up one day and take we'll all of us with that. it. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, everybody. <laughs> okay. If you can't handle it, you probably already no, got it. No, so it's fun. good. Um, this record that we're going to talk about next has two hearts next to it. If you don't know this because you're new to our podcast... I put random hearts next to things mm. I like. Oh, they're not random. Oh, they're not random. They're very specific. Right. And this record is called Excerpts from a Love Circus. And so we're on like tell. the third record now? This record came out in 1996. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And is on 4AD as well. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of tell that she fell in love. Oh. It's really sweet. There's all these like sweet, like self-deprecating love songs on it and i just love it i think it's great and one of those songs is the song we started our podcast with called baby on a plane and i forever once i heard this song um you know i'd like to make mixes which i Mm -hmm. want to talk about mixes for a minute after i'd we talk about this okay and forever i would put this song if i was going to put a lisa germano song on a on a mix mix I wanted to make it where some, I, it's got to be approachable. So it was this one because I felt like it was a combination of the stuff that's a little more poppy that she does. Okay. And still moody and beautiful. Okay. And I think it's the essence of what she does so well. And so Baby on a Plane mm-hmm. is the song. And I imagine, we're going to listen to it a little bit, but I feel like it's kind of that whole thing of like we're on a plane and there's like a baby on the plane. So there's all these, she's putting you in like a, a, a scene uh-huh you know like there's all these chaotic things she's happening. painting a picture and the different ways people react to that baby you know yeah. like and the baby's nervous and the people are nervous or they're irritated anyway it's a great visual i think way to start a song and i forgot to say this record is produced by paul mahern lisa germano produced it. it's the first time i think she's producing it okay and bill bottrell b-o-t-t-r-e-l-l Okay. So Bottrell. Okay. I just like to, I know people don't always care, but I think it's important who produces records. Of course it is. You should care. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Makes a difference. Um, So this song is Baby on the Plane. Big old heart next to that. She's talking about the baby? Mm, no, I think right now she's talking about the person she loves. Oh, I see. Because she's saying, you'll, you'll hear a, bit, a little bit more. I think we need to go up in this next section, which is right after she says that, so you can get an idea. of Because it's really super sweet. Let's go into it. Baby on a plane. Oh, yeah. All right. Love has started. She says that given line, it gives me goosebumps all over my body. It's a goosebumper <laughs> right there. Do 
Do you recall this one? Absolutely. Yes, I do. And I think that's why I put it on the wedding mix. Brand. Yeah, no, it's about, a, that's a good one. And the whole thing of like love has started today. Like she's realizing right at that moment, that's where it started. Mm-hmm. It's happening right then. It's very How sweet. nice to acknowledge it right then. That's nice. But the moodiness of this song that happens, the more of the baby on the plane is a little later on. Okay. And this is like she repeats this section a few times, but this is my favorite one when she does it. So I want you to listen because you'll definitely hear a little bit of a scream in there. And I, I like it when there's a scream in there. Ready? There's a baby screaming on the plane. Ready? A little bit more of baby on the plane. So, did you hear all the screaming? No. You couldn't hear it? <laughs> I mean, I, I was listening to for it. Oh, there was a lot of screaming going on. That's what it, that's, That whole last section, there's so much in it. Yeah. Like, I heard every little, tinkly little nook and cranny and of there. It's like, it's such a soundscape of stuff, mm-hmm. a montage of craziness going on, mm-hmm. and wonderful, beautiful sound. And the thing I love that she says at the end of that song, it's like one of the sweetest things she ever says in lyrics, which she said... You know, like she's talking about like this woman being old on the plane and she's shaking. Like, mm-hmm. why do we go through this? And then mm-hmm. she's like, because of the way you look at me. Aww. That's why like we're all, we're here for love on mm-hmm. this planet. You know, there's there's things that make it tolerable. Even right. when things are really hard and scary. And for me, because I'm so anxious on planes, this song, I used to listen to it when I would take <laughs> off. Because it would make me feel calm, which wow. is weird, even though there's lots of screaming. <laughs> because it's just such a sweet romantic idea. And like this whole idea that you're you're kind of you're fragile, I feel like. Because planes make me feel fragile. You know, mm. like you're mm-hmm. hearsay. This is my interpretation. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah, that's why I always took it as is like this vulnerable time that you have no control over. Someone else isn't the pilot. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, <is> totally. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, although you can be your own pilot. I was going to say, who's in control? Not me. Yeah. No, not me. I don't think so. <laughs> um, the next I want to play over you was a single. Um, you've definitely heard this one too, but you might have forgotten it, which is okay. That's kind of okay. It's oh, it's not okay. I mean, it's not. I mean, I secretly get upset by it, but mm-hmm. then I, I get over it. This song is called I Love a Snot. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Like a snotty person. Just like, or just being playful. like a snot rocket. I think you'll hear in this song. Let's listen to a little bit of I Love a Snot. Shaky, shaky hands, shaky, shaky legs, shaky, shaky stomach when I am with you. Shaky, shaky thoughts, each and every one when I am with you. Run, Toby, run to me. Was that on the mix as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would totally remember that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that that one gets in there. Yeah, it's a bit of an earwig. But it's also just yeah, there's once again really great layers, and it's about to like kick in because it kind of is sound, sounding like it's on more on one side when mm-hmm. you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just love the idea of like you know shaky thoughts, shaky like bad stuff. It's basically just how nervous you are when you really like someone, mm-hmm. and like this next part I think is even cuter. She talks mm-hmm. about her breath, and it's amazing. <laughs> a little bit more of I love a snot. Now, I adore that song, but it was a single. Weird. 
<laughs> which they were trying really hard to make it like the, which it makes sense. It's it's catchy, and they did a remix of it like to make it even more catchy. What do you mean? But it was a single. I mean, like I love a snot is the single off this record. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just it's going to be a challenge. I mean, I think it's great. I'm into it. It's super catchy. Oh, super! It's a super good catchy. song. Um, but I just think. Yeah, I've had a little harder time probably getting that mainstream <laughs> airplay because of that, maybe. But it's just her say, I don't know. Yeah. Um, this next one, Brian, again, another heart. I think there's, this is my other heart of this record. Okay. It's called Small Heads. Do you ever think of me? Nice. How sweet and nice, right? Yeah. It's really, really sweet. <laughs> you don't think it's going to say something sad in it? <laughs> no. no. I no want way. it to. And here it goes. Here's the next section of this song I really love for you to hear. Small heads. all the clapping yes. and stuff and the, like howling in the back i'd love it mm-hmm. sweet song it's yeah that's really sweet. nice i like the you little piano ding 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 it's, it's such it's a really nice very very nice mm-hmm. and we're gonna hear one more song off this record and i do need to tell you brian hmm. this is gonna i'm pretty sure no there's one more never mind never mind never mind <laughs> she had nine recordings and we are gonna have a little bit from each of them except for the all first right. moon palace one that i talked about so okay. um this is the last song we're gonna hear about this record it's called victoria's secret hmm. just a bad dream um and i want you to listen to the lyrics of the song okay intensely Wishes you Your man a wishes you looked like me. Victoria's uh, Secret is a lingerie right. store. Yes, said, I so did yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. So I think she's making the whole, like, I'll let you interpret. Wait, you, you heard it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying Victoria's Secret's a lingerie <laughs> store? Yes, I've Brian. never heard of this yes, before. Um, so yeah, so she is saying that Victoria's Secret wants men to see their significant other like the models in victoria's secret i think so she's just saying like you're not going to look like this kind of thing right and just the insecurity of like your man wishes you looked like this or whatever it's that's victoria's secret (laughs) that's good it's like a little bit of like um like media literacy yeah like hey guess what you're not going to look like the advertisement in that magazine (laughs) Mm. weird and then brian we have an off weird thing that is not one of her main releases but i wanted to talk about because this is something i didn't know about um i heard about so two things yes i didn't know about this release but i did know about how these things happened at 4ad i heard about it so at one point ivo when he was at when he was still the leader of 4AD. Yes. Um, he asked the musicians and musical acts on his label. He said, you know, I would like you guys to pick someone to collaborate with. Mm-hmm. And then I want you to do some kind of recording as like an EP. And then we're going to release one every month hmm. as like a special thing. And cool. it was a really cool idea. Yeah. And a lot of people started doing it. And then he ended up not really doing it because it was impractical. Like, like <laughs> and also no one's going to like only real nerds are going to buy that. Yeah. Um, I would have loved it, but you know, like it was definitely, I think a really cool idea. And so she still 
she was working with this band that was on 40 called Giant Sand. Okay. Um, and a couple of those members went on to become Calaxico. Okay. okay. Um, so it was uh, Hove Gleb. I'm saying, hopefully I'm saying your name right. G-E-L-B. Joey Burns, who's going to be in Calaxico, and John Convertiro. I can't read my writing because it's really, really scratchy. John Convertiro. Okay. okay. And he was also in Calaxico. But they did uh, an EP together, and then 4AD still was like, no, we're not putting it out. And so they put it out <laughs> on uh, Thirsty Ear Recordings, and it came out in 1997. And I want to play you one song from it. This is a cover of Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood. It's called Sand. Have you heard that song before? Probably. I think you probably have. It's a classic. But yeah. It's really nice. And I'm glad they put it out. And I'm glad I finally got to hear it. That's the nice thing, Brian, is sometimes when you do this stuff, you figure out there's things you haven't heard by somebody. You get somebody to hear things. You really like. So here you go. This the ba- name of the band is called OP8. OP8. Mm-hmm. And the album was called Slush. So if you want to hear it, you can go listen to it. I think it's a whole album, not an EP. And it came out in 1997. This song is called Sand. All right. Yeah. I think that's really nice. Reminds me of that song that you like so much. I know. Much I thought it was the same the, one. Um, yeah. The Untold no. document series. I thought, I was like, oh my God, that's that song. And I was like, no, it's not. But I think Lee Hales, Hazelwood does that song. I think yeah. That's why I'm thinking yeah, of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, no, I do love that song. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then in 1998, uh, Lisa Tremano released Slide in, uh, on 4D Records. And it was produced by Chad Blake. But it has a T in front of it, like Chad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you pronounce it? I think it's just Chad. Because I think you would, because he had a really interesting recording technique. Do you remember it, where he does something with a mic? He's been in the magazines that I've read sometimes. Yeah, but um, yeah, I know he's a name that's always there. He has a way of like recording vocals to make it sound like there's more, it's happening more than once. Hmm. Like with the two mics or something like that. Anything. A little Def Leppard treatment? (laughs) No, not like that. (laughs) <laughs> this is how she's going to be sounding like Def Leppard on this next one you know no that's Mutt Lang not him but it'll be interesting anyway this is going to be the last album she records with 4AD and we'll hmm. get into that in a minute and why that happened which is also going to be here I just wanted to, to re- try to remember back you said something about mixes you were like I'm going to tell you something about mixes oh yeah I did didn't I yeah what wow that was like way back now that I don't even remember oh I think no I just said that I mean I kind of did say it as I was saying when I put baby on the plane the reason I'd put it on a record oh, was because right. I felt like it encompassed when I put something new on I know I'm putting an artist that someone hasn't heard on a mm-hmm, mix mm-hmm. which is most of the time what you should be doing mm. um back in the day it was at least <laughs> at least back in the day you don't have to do that you well, can I put mean, songs back in the day you were like. trying to like get people turned on to stuff like it's and true. they would give you stuff that's, it's true. that's how we did it at least a lot of the time mm-hmm. um and I would want to find something that I thought kind of touched on as many parts of that person's work as I could in one song. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I So that's saying. kind of why I'd always choose ah, okay, okay. that one. That one to me, it like touch all, touches all the spots for her of like why I love her music. The yeah. softness, the moodiness of it, the, the instrumentation of it. Mm. Like it was just the lyrics. Yeah. It's all of it. It's, it's a good bright pick. and shiny, bright and shiny. Got anyway. it. Now we're on slide. Okay. And this song I'm going to play for you is called the Way Way Below the Radio. And I have interpretations of how I feel about that. Okay. And I want you to hear a little bit of it and we can get into that. When you rate, give me song. It's not too late to be someone. At home, so cozy. I am waiting for you. Mm-hmm. 
Nice. It sounds like walking in wet. And they they might have been doing some rain stick work. On it does sound one. like that a little bit, mm-hmm. doesn't it? A little bit of like clankly. You got the percussionist in the room. Thank mm. you. <laughs> I did think that too, but I forgot. I didn't have the. Could word. also just be a beans in a can. <laughs> You know? <laughs> totally. It totally <laughs> is. Let's go up a little bit more on Way Below the Radio. And I'm waiting for you. I am here. So it's I nice. think that song, I could be wrong, but after the last album, um, the Love Circus one that we listened to, her sales started kind of going down with 4AD, and there was a couple of reasons why that happened. Um, Warner Brothers had uh, a distribution deal with 4AD, hmm. and it expired. It ended that year, right before her, this record came out, and all the artists that were on 4AD just returned to it as an independent status. And so they didn't get the promotion that they normally would get. Hmm. Um, so she definitely wasn't getting the promotion that she used to get. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that song in particular sounds to me like way below the radio. It's like, like I'm here having right. fun below the radio. <laughs> like I don't need, you know, like I don't think she's sad I'm gonna about I'm going to do it. this because I want to do like, this. Yeah. I'm below that, that level. And I'm pretty, I can't, I've seen her play. But I can't remember. This is so ridiculous. And if my friend Jeremy's listening to me, he's going to be really annoyed because I'm sure he remembers exactly when we saw her. But I don't remember if I saw her in Los Angeles or if I saw her in, um, because she lives in Los Angeles now. So she lived in Mm. Indiana. I mean, excuse me. um, She, you know, toured and was doing what she was doing. And eventually she moves to to Los Angeles. I see. And I'm pretty sure I saw her in Los Angeles. Um, Yeah. And it was a small show. It was intimate. Um, And I think it was around this time period. Um, It was just her. And she played guitar and piano and violin, and it, it was great. Um, but it was small, and I loved it. Mm. But it was definitely a melancholy. Like there was this. So we're gonna get into a little bit more of it. It's great. <laughs> okay. It's such a great thing. This song is called "Tomorrowing." Tomorrowing. Mm-hmm. Like oh. tomorrowing. Ah. I like it. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Um, and I meant to mention, this is something else I read on Wikipedia. This might be an alleged, it was a weird fact, and I, I thought I'd mention it because it's just so out of left field to me, but that before Slide was released, um, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins approached her and asked her to do backing vocals and some instrumentation for like um, Smashing Pumpkins tour. Okay. And at first she was like, nah, I don't want to do that. And then <laughs> um, he, he kind of, you know, pleaded with her a bit and like convinced her that it would be more, not pleaded, but you know, a you know, uh, convinced Made her it. that it was supposedly, from what I read, it would be more collaborative. It wouldn't just be like, hey, just stand up there and yeah. do this thing. So then she was like, okay, I'll do it. And so she rehearsed for four weeks with them. And then yeah. the night before the tour was supposed to go out, she, not even him, but like via their tour manager, told her that she wasn't going. Wow. Without an explanation. Oof. Yeah. So there's a lot of weird things happening in this time period. So that's why I'm saying it's hard too, because when I was doing this research and the whole reason I haven't put this podcast out yet is I very much like this artist and I've always been curious. And when you're on different like reddit kind of like fan pages that talk about Lisa Germano, yeah. um, people will always say, or like for, I'm on a 4AD page. And they're always like, it's a shame. And I'm like, what's a shame? Like she has great work. I always get confused. And I think what they mean is just the mishandling of, like her career like there could have gone better if she had not had like weird things happen at weird times like the warner brother thing happening yeah. um this other thing happened like there's lots of little things happening right. i think that 
made it difficult. And I don't want to speak for her because I don't know. And I tried to find more information. But all you can find is fans lamenting that she was underrated on 4AD and should have been. But she wasn't. I mean, I loved her. <laughs> so like, yeah. I'm always confused by that. But I do think, you know, it's not always easy to do music that isn't super mainstream. And, you know, I, things I, happen. I, I, right? I also like that stuff. There's plenty yeah, of for us. Sure. That, there's plenty of us that want to buy that. So well, and there's I people say, all the it. time during that time that were making music in the same way huh. and yeah. and continue through yeah. today, you know, yeah. where there's lots of really good music that is not going to be part of the mainstream. And also it might just be too that when you start off on a major and then you're on a big label like 4D that with the distribution of Warner Brothers, there's right. an expectation. Sure. And once you sell a certain amount and it starts going down, that can be very hard. And I just feel like the labels that are so great are the ones that really, and I do love 4AD, but I just, that was also another thing is that love you, but Ivo Watts Russell allegedly, you know, had a kind of a mental breakdown uh-huh. um, and he sold the label in 99 and 98 is when she's starting to have troubles with them. So like, I think it was right at a time there was he's just a having lot a hard of weird time. Stuff going on. Like this is all like coming to a blow in my opinion. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm, is allegedly mm-hmm. is why I'm saying this to you. Cause this is the kind of stuff we would talk about with my friends. It was like, and it seems like it's correlated. Like there was all this stuff happening. And yeah. I'm sure, you know, and once the label changed, the, those same independent artists that maybe were, you know, brought in by him weren't as, if they weren't doing well, probably as cared for. Yeah, that's um, too bad. And that, I, what was the label that we were watching a documentary about where, like, when someone wasn't doing so great, they still gave them a few records, like, to kind of figure it out. Yeah. Because sometimes it's not you. It's just, like, it's not the right time or, like, people aren't paying attention in the same way because they're distracted by sweaters and plaid and just like not paying attention you know so like sweaters and plaid (laughs) anyway um so we're gonna play a little bit more this is the last song i'm gonna play from this record okay this song is called reptile songs are definitely rich you know they get a lot going on and there's a lot of layer of sound and it's kind of but then there was other times it was very spacey as well yeah but that's good that one so this is post 480 no this is still 480 this is the last um this song i meant to mention has a big heart next to it that one i think is yeah it's got it in there Mm. it's got it in there to be really specific the organ it's got it that organ is the mm. bee's knees Mm mm-hmm brings me to the floor it's great but i think the reason also i mentioned that maybe i saw her during this tour is because during this tour Mm -hmm. um uh while on tour for the promotion of slide um she was notified that she was being dropped by 4ad jeez so i'm sure that wasn't great news but um but don't worry there's still more records coming out and as i said ivo left in didn't slow her down um i think there was a lot of things going on but i can't this is all allegedly if you're listening (laughs) <laughs> please send me an email and correct me and i'll read it um I, I don't i only mean it with love and i don't i wouldn't want to not right. speak of it because things happened well if you can't find the answer yourself no, it wasn't you know, easy to find to, those things to know um but anyway lullaby for a liquid for liquid pig came out in 2003 and have you ever heard of the uh, label artists direct no artist direct it was when they started selling records like online like the first thing to do that was like you know instead of having like a big label it was just like you could buy it directly from the artist from an online artist situation she was the first person to be signed to the roster that's cool um and this record is produced by jamie caddy laura come it's can it's candy laura (laughs) Laurel, I'm gonna say it. I'll say it to you, Brian. You can spell. <laughs> I'll spell it to you, and you can tell me if I'm right. I'm dyslexic. C A N D I L O R O. Candeloro. There you go, Candeloro. And also, it's close to Italian, and I have a hard time. You do. Um, and also by Joey Warnaker and and also Lisa Lisa Germano. Germano. Joey. Oh my God! Listen to me, Lisa. Germano. Yes, Joey Warnaker. He's another big name in, yeah. in production and uh, as producers right there with Chad Blake. There you go. He's a name that pops up a lot. Pops. 
Um, I really like this record. It is it's moody. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, in a different way. I also think it's um it's uh very experimental in my opinion. I think all of her work is experimental, mm-hmm. but I think this one is when she really puts a full full toe in it. These are your secrets hidden inside wherever you go, wherever you hide, nobody's playing, nobody knows. It's a little sad. Sad, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. beautiful, yeah. Wonderful, nice. Listen to a little bit more of the okay. record. The record, again, is Lullaby for, li- for... I keep wanting to say A, but there's no A in it. Lullaby for Liquid Pig. Got it. This song is called Pearls. Falling fast Raise your glass message for the COVID age. I know. I did do the same Wearing thing when I mask. heard it. I was like, wait a second. Feel your open sores, I think, is one of the yeah, things she says. she did say that. I'm glad you heard Goodness that. Goodness gracious. It's just a little bit further in pearls. With your thoughts delicate you like it that's nice yeah no i mean it's definitely painting a uh kind of a more um somber uh mood to it yeah but it's nice i mean it sounds nice glad you like it yeah uh yeah we're gonna hear one last song from this record but like i said there's more on the mix of course and there's also more on the album if you just go get it Mm. so um this song is called candy Oh yeah, it's my favorite feeling Not there, what a good place to be Too bad it's still raining inside one Mm -hmm. sweet like candy Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) and so after that uh she's gonna put out another album in 2006 and it's called in the maybe world and this is on young god records which is gira from the swans you watched a documentary ah yeah 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 he has a record label um and he asked her if she wanted to put something out she did there's no producer listed okay um so i'm assuming it's her uh and this song i'm going to play you is called into the oblivion somewhere someone's sleeping
I didn't mean to do that. Quick little stop there. I didn't mean to. Sorry. That was, okay. that was an accident. I'm, like happens. I said, I'm using a device I've never used before. It's a new device. And my fingers keep going over it when I don't mean to. Into yeah. oblivion, Brian. How do you feel about going into oblivion? <laughs> Well, you know, like we were saying earlier, eventually we'll all be headed off into the oblivion at some point, um, Mm -hmm. especially when the sun blows up. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the word oblivion. Yeah. Obliterate. It's kind of cool. I've always been a fan. Yeah. It's nice. It it, is this, you said this was a lullabies for liquid pig? No, that was the record before. This record is in the maybe world. I see. Because it still is seeming kind of a lullaby lullaby-ish it's gonna almost. pick up a bit let's go a little further into the song okay into oblivion mm. there was this place before you left there was a story teller Yeah, there's always really beautiful. good. Yeah, she beautiful. does a really good job of um, just making a nice sound with lots of layers of things. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it always feels like a story to me. Mm. Everything feels like a story. Mm. Like it's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the stage has been set. Like everything is put there for you. Yeah. And, just, and I think what that is too is like you were talking about earlier with David Bowie. I think people who are more just on the straight up artist side of things, mm-hmm. which it's hard to be straight up on, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like really, really like. Right. Doing it because it's something conceptual. you need to express as opposed to like making money or whatever, you know. Just being really creative and thinking about every nook and cranny of it. Yeah. Um, so that's a great record. Take that and listen to it. Now we're going to go to another one. This is also on Young God Records and it's called Magic Neighbor. Um, it came out in 2009. Which we on, one we on here? Magic Neighbor. Understood. 2009. You were like, she made... Oh, so this would be the eighth. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Because um, the next one's going to be the ninth. Ah, um, right. So, <laughs> and it was produced by the same gentleman that I had problems pronouncing his name, but you knew who he was. Jamie... Warnaker? No. Chad Blake. <laughs> Stop it. Candelori? Oh, Candelabra. I can read this one because it's actually written clearly where my other thing was chicken scratch. Um, This song I'm going to play you is instrumental and it's called uh, Mary Pen. She likes that kind of um, whimsical, not whimsical, that's not a good way to say it, but the piano seems like it's recorded in a, um, you know, kind of like a music box sort of sounding yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. That's it nice. Also, I was going to say about this record mm-hmm. is, uh, scratch that, I was not trying to think what I was going to say, I lost my train of thought, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> no, I think it's a really pretty song i think it's a beautiful way to start i love that it's instrumental Mm -hmm. i was gonna say that i feel like the strings in general and considering it's her main you know her main focus is the violin um i tried to play it when i was young and i think it once again came back to sadness i think violin (laughs) is one of the most like heart-wrenching instruments as far as like just with a note can just really really just get you you know yeah beautiful I think that's why when when you're feeling sorry for yourself, people make the little tiny (gasps) violin (laughs) symbol. I never really thought of that (laughs) connection. Thank you for really making that clear. I'm serious. I never really did. Yeah. Thank you. You did it. It's playing a sad song for you. Okay. (laughs) This next song I'm going to play from um, Magic Neighbor is called Simple.
Indeed. Sweet whimsy. I love it. Now we're getting to her final album. And like okay. I said, please listen to all of her records if you're in- interested in this, mm. if you like what we're playing. Mm-hmm. Hope, well, of course you do. Um, this record was called No <laughs> Elephants, and it came out in 2013 on Badman Records. Rec- recordings? Badman Recordings. Badman? I start to lose my, my voice at this point. My way of like articulating words mm. is um, dwindled significantly Badman. after saying a whole bunch of stuff. The song I want to play for you it's the final song besides the last song we're going to go out on is called Strange Bird and it has a big old heart next to it. Okay. It beautiful. When I wake in the sun I'm here I'm there Every Bird indeed. Because Brian, what kind of noises does it have in it? It sounded like it had spacey kind of noises uh-huh. to it. Uh-huh. <laughs> How do you feel about space noises? Love them. Yeah. Yes. I think that's a good one. A really good one. Can you hear a little further in that song? Sure. Listen to some more Strange Bird. Strange Bird. Strange Bird. So, Brian. Yes. That was a brief <laughs> dive. I'm sorry, it was a brief dive. Oh, you're going to still play one more, into the though. the work right? of Lisa Germano. How do you feel? How do I feel? Do you feel like you got a sense of what she's up to? Yes, very much. Um, yeah, I think she's got an incredibly beautiful voice. And, and like you said, it's one of those things where she may not have been part of any kind of mainstream or whatever but it's very good and it's um you know something where she's super talented and you know maybe didn't get all the breaks that some people did but it's beautiful music Mm -hmm. and happy to have heard it and i hope she keeps putting out music that was the last thing she put out in 2013 i'm Mm. hoping she will get on back to it yeah sure go for a tour i'll definitely go um i know you and i'll take you with me i will go take you with me speaking of the book you're reading um yeah i i I just really love her music and i'm glad that we got to sit here for some time and listen and yeah i also wanted to mention i keep forgetting because we haven't done this in forever and when we do do it I, i forgot to forget to say these things but if you'd like to hear these mixes, our music mixes are on, I already told you that, on Spotify. Yes. Um, and on YouTube Music. I prefer the YouTube Music ones because they usually have more um, of the rare things that I sometimes put on the mixes mm-hmm. where um, Spotify does. And, and also, if you would like to follow us, you can follow us on Instagram. I'm not really doing anything with Twitter, surprise, like a lot of you. But also, I just wasn't really doing anything with Twitter even before he got involved. So I just was like, there's no extra incentive for me to continue doing it so there's really nothing on there but also we have a facebook page follow it and i'll very rarely put up a a thing but you know you can and if you want to write us you can write us through um that or you can also write us in a good old-fashioned email at i already told you that at gmail.com indeed so thank you melissa Mm -hmm. once again re-educating my feeble brain on and definitely now have a better understanding and a better connection to this because I certainly heard those two tracks that you had part of our wedding mix, which mm-hmm. one of them definitely stuck with me. Well, they both did. Um, but 
you have already told us that, mm-hmm. and I appreciate it, oh, no and problem. I thank you. What are you going to take us out on? Also, I'm going to say, too, um, we're going to be taking a break. <laughs> um, I'm going to be gone. You know, for, like usual. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be gone, but no, but we're going to try to be more consistent when I get back, but I'm going to be gone. We're going to have our next season after we have... There you go, yeah. season but, uh, three. I'm going to take a break for a couple months, because mm-hmm. I'm going to go to the States and see our family and stuff. Um, but we'll be back at you. And there's plenty of episodes. We have almost 60. So you oh, can my go through gracious. the ones That's that you right. said, I don't know who this band is and I'm not listening. Give that one a listen. <laughs> <Right. That's laughs> you might right. like it. You never um, know. Or I think I don't want to hear that one. You might enjoy. You never know. So mm-hmm. there's plenty of our back catalog to keep you listening. And I already told you that. Indeed. Um, this song we're going to go out on, Brian, is called A Million Times. And it's on, from the album Magic Neighbor. Thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And thank you all for listening to I Already Told You That. We'll see you again sometime in the future. In the future. In the future. Bye. Oh